Hi, welcome to Hubrick Bull Sessions. Today we're going to build our very own DIY EQ. A while ago I made a little unboxing video of the DIY EQ from uh, DIY Recording Equipment. Uh, this one. Yeah, today we're gonna build this one and uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit how to do it, what kind of tools you need and also I'm gonna give some sort of a review. A little review of the difficulty of building it. In the next episode, in two weeks, uh, I'm gonna make some sound examples and uh, try it out a little bit. So, let's build! Okay, here we have the kit that we're going to build. It's the EQ P5 Passive EQ from DIY Recording Equipment. If you go to DIYRecordingEquipment.com, click yourself into the product page of this EQ, you're gonna find the documents for uh, building instructions and stuff like that. And the first thing you will read in the instructions is what kind of uh, tools you're gonna need. What we need is soldering iron, solder, screwdriver, wire cutters and a 1.5 millimeter hex T that are included with the, with the kit. Here we have all the stuff we need. We have the main PCB and as you can see there are numbers on all those little bags. It's pretty much the assembly order of everything and naturally we have the main PCB as number zero. Usually you want to put the components on in some sort of size order. So you start with the smallest ones flattest towards the surface of the PCB and then you work yourself out from that. In this case we have a bag number one it contains the resistors and this one is divided into two bags and you can identify the value of those by the, by the color code or you can use the multimeter. When you have figured out which one goes where uh, you just bend them close to the body of the resistor and then you put it in the right place, flip it over, and then close outward like that, so it will stick. There we go, then we have the first and second bag of resistors in place, so then we just flip the PCB over, and what we're gonna go do now is solder those in place. Make sure the solder like floats out and doesn't just become a bubble on top of everything. You want to make sure that it really connects to the legs of the resistors and to the PCB. Not too much solar and not too little. Um, just enough to like cover up the, the copper ring around the legs. So when you're done with that, you take your wire clippers and uh, remove all the legs. Go. First round of resistors in place. Bag number three is divided in three bags. I have a bunch of capacitors and uh, a variable resistor. And also, those small capacitors are not polarized, so it doesn't matter in which direction you put them in. C8, C5. And this one is some sort of resistor. You want to look for this. It's a little dot on this end. You want to align that with the dot on here where it says RA1, 100K. So dot to dot. You just put it in there. Then we put this variable resistor in. So this one will be the bandwidth uh, adjuster. We have a C12 and C14. Those are also not polarized, they go either way. Lead one and lead two. Uh, and here we have a little polarization on those because uh, the longer leg on the lead should go into the hole it says plus. Uh, so make sure you put it in the right direction. The long leg into hole with plus. Lead 
one non leg plus lead two. We go we have bag number four. I'm gonna sort this out. C7, and as you see, those also have different length of legs, and the longer one is the plus side. C7, one leg, and the plus side. C15, we have a, a maker cap, no polarization on this one. So, those maker caps are going into the circular prints. Uh, the ones underneath here if, is if you want to customize the frequency bands, but if you're just building the stock one as I'm doing now, just ignore those under the circles and just use the circle markings. The same here, you have an extra marker under the C17, just ignore that for now. And also those are not polarized spellers, they go either way. Those two are apparently self-resetting fuses, um, and they go in F1 and F2. I'm gonna do a little uh, recap here. After the resistors, uh, we had the bag number three and four. Basically, we're just still moving uh, up in the sizes of components. So now we have some maker capacitors, uh, some other capacitors, and some self-resetting fuses here. So as you can see, we're moving forward. The next bag we're gonna open is bag number five, and it's with the big uh, capacitors. So continue with that. As you see here, you have a longer leg and a shorter leg. The short leg is minus, long leg in plus. The red ones are not polarized, they go in C, let's see, C3 and C4. L1, it's an inductor. It's like a key component in the Poltec style uh, equalizers. Uh, inductor E cubes. So no plus and minus on this one, I guess. Go. Uh, next bag, bag number six. Pour it out on the table. There we go. Let's see what we have here. Potentiometers, sockets, screws, standoffs, and brackets. There we go. We should solder those uh, brackets, but do not cut the, the, the remaining legs off. And you just solder it to this one point here. Next off, uh, potentiometers. B1K, it's here. B10K, A10K on VR3, 10K A on VR4. Uh, bag number seven, which has a daughter board. So let's move the motherboard over for a moment. And empty this bag. And some connectors, screws, and some push buttons, and brackets. and. I live. There is a marking in here uh, on the PCB board and the lead should be just in it. There we have the daughter board above the motherboard. Next up we have bag number 8 with the integrated circuits um, that are going into IC1 and IC2 uh, where we put the sockets before. I have a little little dot up in the, um, one of the corners and that one should be in the upper left corner when you put them in the sockets in there. Next to the last bag is bag number nine. And of course we need to unpack the front to as assemble the last parts here. So now you're gonna need the little hex key that was included in the kit. Let's see if it fits. So those will attach to the, the brackets that we put in here before. Mm, there we go, it's finished. As you see here, this is blank because uh, it's only if you do the optional uh, transformer output to make the vintage EQ. 
and this is the more simple kit for the modern EQ. I would say this build is relatively easy. If you've ever built any stomp boxes or guitar pedals before, this will be a piece of cake. Just follow the instructions, the assembly guide and the component sorting sheet. If it's the first time you ever built anything, I would suggest trying to solder some cables or some smaller circuits first, but if you're comfortable with soldering, no problem. As I said, here's the finished EQ. Uh, the EQ P5 from JL Recording Equipment. And actually now, just a few minutes ago, the band I'm gonna record this week, uh, We Dream Alone, arrived here. So I'm gonna put this in the rack and start using it right away. So in the next video I can make some sound tests and uh, evaluation of this week working with it. Thanks for watching, um, see you again in two weeks and then I'm gonna give you some examples of this and we're gonna see how cool it sounds. So, cheers!